Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Nash, uh, DPT physical therapist in Aurora, Colorado, and I work at Hesh Institute, and that's spelled H-E-S like Sam, C-H. And the title of this is Why Pelvic Asymmetry is Not an Indicator of Sacroiliac Movement Dysfunction. In order for the ilium to rotate on the sacrum, there has to be concomitant movement in the pubic joint because there's only one large bone that connects them and that's named the hemipelvis. So this is the right hemipelvis and you can see that it connects the sacrum to this large mass of bone and the hemipelvis is oftentimes referred to as the ilium and it consists of the iliac bone or ilium, the ischium and also the pubic bone. They fuse in early adulthood and become one solid half of the pelvis, aka hemipelvis. So if you truly had movement of the ilium moving on the sacrum in the sacroiliac joint, you would have movement translated all the way to the pubic bone. That's a very important concept to understand and we will elaborate on that. So you will always have movement in the pubic joint when you have movement in the sacroiliac. Many patients have significant asymmetry between the right and left ilium. However, in checking those patients, checking the top of the pubic bone, checking the upper third in the front, the middle third in the front, and the lower third of the pubic joint reveals symmetry. So in that individual, although the pelvis is very asymmetrical, it is not due to movement inside the sacroiliac joint. There is a simple explanation. The pelvis can move as a unit in which both hemipelvises move together, but one might move, seem to move further depending on where the axis of movement is. It will look that way, but the movement is of the entire pelvis causing asymmetry, not movement inside the sacroiliac joint. Very oftentimes that's the case. The pelvis moves with the lumbar spine. The pelvis also moves with the hips and with the trunk. So if a person with significant asymmetry of the ilium, if it was due to movements in the sacroiliac joint, then there would be a discernible difference somewhere along the pubic joint. And we do see those. We do see cases where there is a shift in the pubic joint and there is asymmetry of the pelvis. And we treat both of those. We treat the pubic joint and we treat the sacroiliac. However, there are many more patients who have asymmetry of the pelvis that there is no shift at the pubic joint and therefore it's coming from a different set of joints typically the hip joints below. And the hip joint, the top of the femur, is very much like a ball. And so all kinds, all manner of movement of the whole pelvis can occur on that hip joint and cause significant asymmetry. Let's use an analogy. In your car, the shock absorbers are a type of joint in the front end of the car. However, your wheels typically move with no discernible movement in your shock absorber unless there's an external passive force such as hitting a pothole. The shock absorbers can be correlated to the sacroiliac joint. The shock absorbers are inside the front end of the, of the car that has movable parts and your sacroiliac joint is inside the pelvis. You can have pelvic movement 
in three-dimensional space, but inside the sacroiliac joint, there can be complete symmetry. This is a very, very important concept. So when asymmetries do, sorry, let me catch up on my notes. And so going back to the analogy of the car, the shock absorbers do not move every time you drive your car and your sacroiliac does not move every time you move your spine, pelvis, or hips. Movement tests of the pelvis in standing are very inaccurate. There are a large number of reasons why the pelvis might move asymmetrically with the standing positional and movement tests that have nothing to do with movement inside the sacroiliac joint. Research has shown that it's less than two millimeters of glide or rotation occurring in the SI joint, and that would be very difficult to discern with simple palpation and simple observation. Furthermore, the sacroiliac joint is very stable in standing. That's the most stable position because you have the weight of your upper body compressing that joint. And again, research has proven that movement with those tests is much less than uh, two millimeters uh, in the sacroiliac joint. So asymmetry of the pelvis in standing an asymmetr asymmetrical movement of the pelvis with motion tests such as hip movement have a lot to do with the entire pelvis moving on the hip joints. There is such an ingrained belief that pelvic asymmetry validates movement in the sacroiliac joint and that if that asymmetry is protracted, some believe that it validates sacroiliac instability. It does not. There are many other examples as to why the pelvis might maintain itself in a position of asymmetry. Some people even have asymmetrical development of the pelvis, but were never aware of it because they were not focusing on that area of their body until they get injured. And then they cannot achieve symmetry and they feel like that's, that can be blamed on sacroiliac instability and that simply is a false belief. There are exceptions to everything, but I see many clients who are being told by other clinicians, by other physical therapists um, who purportedly um, specialize in the sacroiliac joint that they need a sacroiliac fusion simply on the basis that they haven't been able to maintain symmetry of the pelvis. When I treat the pelvis, I align it. I'm very thorough at aligning it, extremely thorough, but I also understand that some of that malalignment can come from nearby joints and far away joints. So it's important to treat the lumbar spine. Very important to treat the hip joints to assist in achieving pelvic alignment. But also important to treat the knee joint as sometimes you can have a knee dysfunction causing asymmetry of the femur and the other end of that femur of course is the hip joint. Um, also asymmetrical movement that is treatable in the foot and ankle and the subtalar joint. The joint where the ankle bone and the calcaneus connect. Um, that's very important because that can cause asymmetry throughout the kinetic chain. Um, so my approach is a true whole body approach and again I'm very thorough in treating the sacroiliac joint, achieving symmetry of the pelvis when it's achievable, but also restoring normal movement and stability in the sacroiliac joint. It's very important that we let science guide us and look at the research and see what it informs. And there was a time when I truly believed that an asymmetrical pelvis was due to a movement dysfunction in the sacroiliac joint. But then I developed a way to get more information from that structure and found that many times it was not related to the sacroiliac joint. It can be very challenging 
to change beliefs and it can certainly be uncomfortable. However, the truth is what really matters for our patients. And science has helped a lot more people recover from injury than has mythology and pseudoscience. Please don't take it personal if I'm telling you something that you have not heard before and that greatly challenges your belief system regarding the sacroiliac joint. I have many, many YouTube videos of me helping complex cases of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So I know that that's a valid diagnosis for some people. I'm simply addressing a significant mythology here. As a clinician and an expert in treating the sacroiliac joint who has taught over 100 sacroiliac workshops, I am committed and concerned about persons who have a diagnosis of sacroiliac dysfunction but are being given false information. I treat complex cases of sacroiliac joint dysfunction and align, I align pelvises and I restore normal movement and stability to the pelvic joints. However, I greatly oppose creating fear in the minds of patients by telling them that they have an unstable sacroiliac joint on the basis of pelvic asymmetry. Truth matters. I treat pelvic asymmetry as part of the overall care, but I do not perpetuate the myth, the pseudoscience, that asymmetry of the pelvis is due to excessive movement of the ilium on the sacrum. Thank you very much. Again, I'm Jerry Hesch, DPT, from Hesch Institute, spelled H-E-S like Sam, C-H, in Aurora, Colorado. Our website is www.hes like Sam, C-H, institute.com. Thank you very much.